Happy Wednesday. It is the 10th of May. My armpit itched. Deal with it. So before I get into the charts, I wanted to describe um, or at least explain in part and what the hell it is I'm doing. Okay. Um, so um, is it technical analysis? No. Does it look like technical analysis? Kind of. Right. Um, what the hell is sentiment analysis? Besides some voodoo that an SEO guy is going to try to sell you to get more traffic to your e-commerce website, right? Growth hacking, uh, growth marketing, as the cool kids, I think, call it today. Um, so let me let me get into the, some, some of the basics. So algorithmically, about four or five years ago, algorithmically, I started creating this software package that allowed me to uh, more rapidly read what was going on online, build patterns within it, identify how consumers respond to it at scale. Consumers, y'all, right? The, the few of you that will watch this. And grabbing that, measuring it, and metering it, scaling it, right? Scaling it meaning like you, you stack it into um, historical pivot points uh, would allow you to look at today, compare it historically, machine learning aspect of it, and then provide prescriptive analytics when you're looking forward. So how information is being presented to people today and how that resonates with those people today will likely repeat how it resonated with people in the past because the consumer base is slightly evolving, but not yet maturing at a level that is mass market or scale. Cryptocurrency is pretty unique in that you are allowed, uh, afforded, I guess, um, a really unique lens into a financial market where consumer data and actions on that information that they are presented with, um, they correlate in such a way that you can rely statistically on the behaviors of people, if you can identify what they're watching, like a YouTube video or what they're reading, you know, like on, uh, you know, Coin Telegraph or whatever, or if uh, certain technical analysis charts are resonating with the public, right? So um, this is, I think I've kind of mentioned this once in the past a little bit, but uh, TA doesn't actually work in cryptocurrency markets. It does if enough people believe in it. So by definition, popular technical analysis that is resonating amongst people is sentiment data. It only works if people believe, right? So, um, and the fundamentals of technical analysis, I mean, even in traditional finance markets, everybody knows that TA is basically hair specs. It's just like, it helps people feel certain good around certain things. But at the end of the day, FIB levels don't control a market. Um, you know, uh, clouds and, and, and wave whatever's and Wyckoff's and Stoke and all this, those things, they, they, they do help, right? But they don't cause a market. And what causes the market is the way people feel about what they see in their analysis. And if enough people see the same thing, then the analysis is likely going to come to fruition. Now, um, the same thing happens for like programmatic software, right? So on traditional markets, you'll have, um, uh, you know, algorithms and, and automatic trading and, and front running on 401ks and a lot of the fun stuff at the microsecond. Um, same thing with the cryptocurrency market. There's microseconds like bots are actually acting against consumers at scale at the exchange level. But, um, but that stuff only amplifies the volatility of the way the market is responding. So uh, I digress. Um, so I really would just wanted to kind of like explain what the hell it is I'm doing with this stuff. It's not technical analysis. It's a visual representation of sentiment data and how uh, what I built provides me with expectations in the market as a response to information that is given to uh, the consumer at large. And it's presented in a visual way that is familiar, meaning that uh, we've crafted the visual output of this so that we could read it as people. 
um, in a in a in a way that is that resonates with other people in the in the financial world. Meaning that there are Fibonacci levels in this, right? Um, there's standard deviations in it as well. We just do a Fibonacci offset for it, and uh, and we have horizontal lines on charts and vertical bars going through them and things like that. So it does provide you with things like levels and resistance points and support lines. And, and those things are very familiar, right? Um, but it's more rooted in uh, behavioral expectations. So every line that I present is actually the way that people will respond to the market and when at, at a consumer level, right? Not at a price level. So there's a fine difference there. And before I get too far into this, I want to hop over to the charts because uh, BTC is doing a thing. So that was a five minute little intro. Terribly sorry to take up your time. I will breeze through this. I got, uh, I'm going to break, break it over to um, Matic and Link today. So let me kick over to here. I currently have ADA up because it just, I'm curious about it. You know, I've, I've liked ADA since October, 2017 um, in terms of, you know, what they're trying to build. I mean, but there's so many other assets out there nowadays that are basically doing the same kind of thing, right? And um, like even BRC20s are, are kind of being a deal right now. It's like anytime that somebody makes something, you can like build something into crypto. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, so dApps and all that other stuff or whatever. It would be great to see some kind of uh, um, larger market appeal around this stuff. And, and oddly enough, I think that uh, when it comes to people talking about Web3, or whatever there's there's definitely a lot of uh, promise there and uh, over the next three to five years you should start seeing something congeal with brands that actually like resonate with households regular households not crypto households right in, in that space but uh we're not going to get into the fundamentals today i'm just going to talk about the sentiment side of the world because we got twenty eight thousand holding right uh death grip right now for btc so let's dig in so our micro trend for BTC right now, as the chart loads in, we have a trend event that got published earlier this morning um, with a mean just underneath 28K. It's 27,988. What this means is that is the um, the flat middle of the argument, the human argument right now going on between BTC, where uh, on the low side, people are going, oh, it's going to be 25K, which is it's not. Um, 26.5 maybe, right? And lowest side. And then oh, it's going to be 30K, which it's not. It's 28.5 is the highest side. So we have 28.5 and and, uh, and 26.5, right? On the on the edges right now. And that's kind of like the battlegrounds. And we're on the bullish side of that right now where the 29.5 guys are winning, okay? And they've been winning since yesterday when I was like, hey, that's bottom. And it stayed bottom all damn day, all night. I watched this chart to make sure I didn't lie to you guys all the way until about two in the morning. Um, and we never got below the mean, which was 27,453 um, outside of this one little candle bit right here. But the video had already gone at that point, I believe. So I watched all of this and we just hung out and ranging between the upper side one sig and the lower side uh, that the mean there, upper side one sig was at uh, 27,815. Really strong amount of bullish lean to this. And, you know, I was... Um, actually reading normally i have the algorithm read for me but like i was actually reading all the stuff right all the doom and gloom that's out there oh my god it's been hanging here forever it's going to reject it's going to reject blah 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 and you know for me levels of comfort were how can it reject it's still above the mean on the bullish side for what everybody in the internet's saying and how we're reading it the way that these this consumer micro trend is right now the upper side of the mean is 27,453. Any activity below that, sure, sure, it's going to collapse, but it's not. Um, so there was a level there, but it wasn't, for me, it was like, okay, well, how high is it going to go? And the two sig made sense, right? The uh, 28,263 on the upper side, and it made sense. And then, uh, you know, so we we obviously tried to push up to that, and we did a little bit. Um, got a new mean, and now here we are about three hours into it. So there's not a whole lot of forecasting I can provide on a three-hour-old micro trend, but I can tell you this: as long as we're staying above that mean at 27,988, just like yesterday, build price action in that range on the upper side of it more often than not over the next 12 hours, then 29.5 becomes a pretty easy thing to rely on. Activity below that starts to get heavier handed on the downside, right? Because you have 28K losing, right? If it loses a substantial amount of steam, then 27, 
27.5, actually, 27.6, to 27.1. Man, if you start hitting that 27.1, that's a bigger collapse. That's actually something a bit more like, you know, start to get kind of bearish, right, with the way the outlook on the market there. Um, So just keep those levels in mind um, as you analyze the market today. You know, treat that mean as like a little pad of comfort, like a nice memory foam mattress or maybe a waterbed if you're a kid from the 80s. Um, right now, Matic, it's going to have a hell of a time getting back to a buck. Um, but uh, as long as it's operating above the mean, which is at 86.47 on the USDT, that's pennies. Yeah, 0.8647 USDT. It's really hard to actually talk about four decimal pennies. Whatever. Uh, it's going to work around there, right? Staying above that, awesome. Going to that one sig at 89.13, pretty reasonable, right? 90 cents being the psychological barrier, but it's kind of a weak one. Upper side, um, all the way to 92.41 or even 97.72 on the upper side three sig, which might be a little bit hard to get to today, um, is good. Uh, it's a it's a good range to kind of think about for like getting bullish 97.72, right? It's actually pretty substantial in terms of percentages. Um, but on the downside, if you start seeing activity, substantial activity below that 86.47, then you'll notice that the two sig is sitting, uh, the lower side two sig is sitting firmly at 80 cents. That's going to hold it up. Um, so, you know, these 75 centers for Matic, I still don't see it. Um, there's a lot of people out there looking for 75 cent Matic. Um, and it's just, it's not, it's just not there yet. There's not enough weight on the bottom side of this to pull it down to that 75 cent range with any level of, of substance, right? Um, so Link as being an ass um, on the Jarvis side, we're operating on the overextended underside four sig. So this is uh, the price being down here where it's at all the way at uh, 658 right now. Just keep in mind that our trend in terms of the way sentiment sh- like is formulating its market, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, market tolerance, right? For uh, link is all the way up at 667 with the high side at 724. The return to mean on this would be 695. So should Link decide to try to get back to that mean without establishing a new trend event, a new mean, that 695 becomes the target. I mean, it just pulls right back to it, um, given the opportunity. If BTC behaves itself and we start to get bullish with Link, then it's a pretty easy uh, play to make, especially when we're working with these overextended ranges. Overextended basically means it's working outside of or it's working on an extreme of where the market is willing to uh, play for this asset. So bottomy, very bottomy for Link. That's what it feels like anyways, according to the lines that I have on my screen. Um, for a macro so, uh, macro levels here for the sentiment support and sentiment resistance, 28.164 is the price to beat right now for BTC. Getting up above that, you could get a return to mean of 29.103 pretty easily. Uh, punching through that and getting up to that 30,000 mark is going to take some work. So when we get to 29103, uh, you, you should see some stalling on BTC. Um, any price action above that, I'm talking like uh, 29,150 or so, then 30K becomes pretty easy to see um, in terms of being able to justify it for the levels. Matic is playing this bottom side max support, 87.9, just hugging that line like holding onto it for dear life. Uh, medium support right now is at 97. So it's a pretty substantial delta between this max support and that medium support. A lot of upside potential on Matic right now if max support can hold. So it's a pretty tight line right now, right? Um, there's a little buffer. You can see yesterday we were hugging it on the underside, but we popped above it and now we're kind of riding above it. Um, so that's a good thing, right? If we can establish price above max support, then you actually start looking at targets on the higher side of 97. That's pretty substantial. Um, Link still has some bottom. It still has not found its max support at 631, um, which is fine. I don't really expect assets to always find max support if they're on their way down, but like it also hasn't returned to mean. Um, You know, obviously we haven't gotten that 760 for, you know, a week and a half. I'm only looking at like a nine day span here, so I'm not going to dig back into the last time that actually hit the mean, but it's been a minute. So, Um, there you go. There's the market, uh, Beal. I'm sorry. I rambled on for the first five minutes of video. I know it's a 15 minute video today, but I'm pretty sure you'll live. Most people don't watch this long anyways, so I can pretty much say whatever I want right now and not get hammered for it, but yeah, fuck it till tomorrow. 
Later.